Today we're going to show you how to perform a fine needle aspirate, which is also referred to as an FNA. This dog has a lump behind her elbow, which you can visualize here. I'm holding it in my left hand. This is a procedure that is well tolerated by animals because it really doesn't cause much pain. It's uh, the same type of procedure as we would use for vaccinating a dog, where we're simply sticking a needle into the skin and tissue. The reason for performing a fine needle aspirate is to obtain cells to allow us to do a cytologic evaluation under the microscope of those cells and try to arrive at a diagnosis. So the first step in this procedure then is to have a syringe and needle. So I have a 22 gauge needle and one can use a 22 uh, or down to a 25 gauge needle. We should not use a needle larger than 22 gauge because that will result in uh, blood contamination of our sample. And that applies also even to large animal species where one might think that you should use a larger needle, but it is definitely not necessary. Then you'll have a syringe, and the syringe can be three mils up to 10 to 12 uh, ml in size. So we will prepare uh, to do the aspirate by uh, assembling our syringe and needle by attaching those two together. Then you will take the cap off of the needle so that you're ready to do your aspirate. Then you want to immobilize the mass in your left hand. For me, I'm right-handed. So we will insert the needle into the mass. Then we want to apply negative pressure as much as we can. Then we will redirect that needle within the mass, usually two to four times. Then we'll release the pressure on that needle. Then we'll withdraw the whole unit from the mass. Now that we have our fine needle aspirate performed, we need to demonstrate to you how to make cytology smears. And these are usually done using a slide over slide technique, which is what I'm going to show you in a moment. Some people will also make smears as you would for a blood smear. And that can be used sometimes, especially if you're finding cells dis disintegrate very easily on you when you're making smears. So the steps involved to make your slide over slide smears are first of all to detach the needle from the syringe, fill that syringe with air, and reattach the needle to the syringe. Then you will take the cap off of that needle, make sure they're tight, tightly uh, joined, and you will express material onto two or three slides. The next step is to make your smear, and you will pick up the slide that contains the material. So we have a drop of material near the frosted end of that smear. I will pick up another slide and lay that slide at right angles over the smear that contains the uh, material. You will let that sit on the drop and then pull it across to make uh, your cytologic smear. The next step then is to allow the smears to air dry, which happens very quickly. And then you'll want to label that smear. And that should be labeled with patient information, such as the animal's name, the owner's name, and also the site. So I will label this with the animal's name and the site. Then any smears that you have can be placed into a slide protector and that will keep them protected for a submission. Now you want to usually have at least two or three smears from each site if possible. Sometimes you will perform more than one aspirate on a larger mass or if you feel that the material you've obtained is not uh, adequate then you would certainly repeat your aspirate. Now these smears can be submitted to a diagnostic laboratory in the slide protector. 
You'll want to submit them not with any other formal and fixed specimens because that will cause cell disintegration and will ruin your sample. So once this mirror is dried, then you can just close that top and it would be ready to package up for submission to your diagnostic laboratory. Now a good habit to get into is to stain one of your smears at your clinic so that you ensure that you've obtained good material on your aspirate. And you can stain that with the quick stain that you normally use for blood smears such as protocol HEMA3 stain. If you plan on examining all of the smears yourself at the clinic, then you would stain all the smears and look at them under your own microscope.